Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Good day everyone. So I am Bajahan Kayugin Lomanda from the Bachelor of Science in Community Development. So for today's video, I'm going to discuss the chapter 4 of the life and works of Dr. Sarisan. But before that, let me ask you a question. Did you know about the scholastic and triumphs of Dr. Sarisan at the Pineo de Manila? So let's talk about it. For today's lesson, I'm going to discuss is all about the scholastic triumphs at the Ateneo de Manila on 1872-1877. Jose was sent to Manila four months after the martyrdom of Gomborza and with Doña Tudora still in prison. He studied in the Ateneo Municipal, a college under the supervision of the Spanish Jesuits. So si Jose ay pinadala sa Manila apat na buwan pagkatapos ng pagiging martyr ni Gomborza at kasama si Doña Tudora na nasa pulungan pa rin. Nag-aral siya sa Ateneo Municipal kung saan ay isang kolehiyo sa ilalim ng pangangasiwa ng mga Spanish Jesuits. So what is Ateneo Municipal? Ateneo Municipal is a bitter rival of the Dominican-owned College of San Juan de Letran. So ang San Juan de Letran o Domenico ay mahigpit na katunggali ng Ateneo de Manila. So, this is the picture of Ateneo de Manila. Ateneo Municipal is also formerly the Scalapia or Charity School for Poor Boys in Manila established in 1817. In 1859, name was changed to Ateneo Municipal by the Jesuits and later became the Ateneo de Manila. So, ang Ateneo Municipal ay kilala noon bilang Skwela Pia na kung saan ay paaralan sa Manila na para sa mga mahihirap na kalalakihan na itinatag noong 1817 at di kinalaunay naging Ateneo de Manila noong 1859. So, let us proceed to the Rizal Interest de Ateneo. June 10, 1872, Jose, accompanied by Pasiano, went to Manila to take the entrance examinations on Christian doctrine, arithmetic, and reading at the College of San Juan de Latran and passed them. His father was the first one who wished him to study at Latran, but he changed his mind and decided to send Jose at Tatineo instead. So noong June 10, 1872, Ang araw na kung kailan si Jose ay sinamahan ng kanyang kuya na si Pasiano papunta sa Manila upang kumuha ng entrance examination para sa doktrin ng Kristiano, aritmatika at pagbasa para makapasok sa kolehiyo ng San Juan de Latran. So, ano nga bang naging resulta ng kanyang entrance examination? Sa kabutihang palad, siya naman ay pumasa dito. So, what is the reason why Father Magin Ferrando, a college register of Ateneo Municipal, refused to admit to Sir Rizal? So, the two reasons is that he was late for registration. And the second one, Jose was sickly and undersized for his age, 11 years old. So, ayun nga, magbabay na sana sila Jose Rizal mula sa Ateneo Municipal, pero nung una ay hindi siya tinanggap ni Father Magin Ferrando. Nandahal nga sa kanyang sinabi na may dalawang dahilan siya na kung saan ang una ay huli na daw sa pagpapalista si Jose Rizal na kung saan ay tinatawag natin sa kasulukuyan ngayon na enrollment. At ang pangalawang kadahilanan naman ay si Jose daw ay isang sakitin at maliit pa lamang para sa kanyang edad. Upon the intercession of Manuel Sarex Burgos, nipo of the Father Burgos, he was admitted at Ateneo. Jose adopted surname Rizal at Ateneo because their family name Mercado had come under suspicion of the Spanish authorities. So sino nga ba tong si Manuel Sarex Burgos? Si Manuel Sarex Burgos ay ang pamangkin ni Father Burgos na kung saan ay ang tumulong kay Jose Rizal upang makapasok sa Ateneo. Ateneo was located in Intramuros, within the walls of Manila. He boarded in a house on Caraballo Street, 25 minutes walk from the college. The boarding house was owned by Titay, who owed Rizal family 300 pesos, and Jose boarded there to collect part of the debt. So ayun nga no, nang mag aral si Rizal sa Ateneo, na kung saan ang kolehiyo ay nasa loob mismo ng Intramuros, sa loob ng pader ng Manila, um, nung una ay nangupahan siya ng bahay na kung saan ay matatagpuan sa Kale Carabalho na siguro nilalakad niya ito mula sa kanyang paaralan ng 25 minutes. So sino nga ba itong si Titay? Si Titay ay ang matandang nagmamayari ng bahay na inuupahan ni Jose Rizal. Si Titay din ay may utang mula sa pamilya ng Rizal. At siya yung nagpresenta kay Jose Rizal upang yung kanyang pambayad sa 
pinapaupahan niya ay yun yung magiging paraan upang mabawasan or makabayad ng utang mula sa pamilya ng Rizal. So let us proceed to the Jesuit system of education. Jesuits trained the character of the student by rigid discipline, humanities, and religious instruction. They heard mass early in the morning before the beginning of daily class. The classes were open and closed with prayers. And the students were also divided into two, gro into two groups. Rather. The first one is Roman Empire. And it is also consisting of the internas or borders with red banners. And the second one is Carta Carthaginian Empire. That is composed of the extern externs or non-borders with blue banners. And each of these impress had its ranks. Students fought for positions with three mistakes of po opponent's position could lose his position. So the first best is called Imperor. The second best is called Tribune. The third best is called Decorion. And the fourth best is called Centurion. And the fifth best is the, or the last best is called Standard Bearer. Mm. Ateneo students' uniform is consisted of hem fabric trousers and striped cotton coat. The coat was called Rayadillo and was adapted as the uniform for Filipino troops during the days of the First Philippine Republic. So ano nga ba ang mga nangyari or kaganapan na meron sa Jesuit system of education? Kagaya nga ng sinabi ko no, na kung saan makikita natin sa slide na sinasanay nila yung mga estudyante sa pamamagitan ng pagdisiplina at pagbibigay ng instruksyong panrelihiyon. So let us proceed to the results first year in Ateneo on 1872 to 1873. So uh, Father Osebeck is the first professor of Rizal in Ateneo. Rizal was placed at the bottom of the class since he was a newcomer and knows a little Spanish. He was an ex external or Carthaginians occupying the end of the line. But at the end of the month, he became emperor of his empire. He was the brightest pupil in the whole class, and he was awarded a prize, a religious prize. Rizal took private lessons in Santa Isabel College during noon recesses to improve his Spanish language, paying three pesos for those extra lessons. He placed second at the end of the year, although all his grades will still mark excellent. So let us move on to the summer vacation on 1873. Rizal did not enjoy his summer because his mother was in prison. So Nanning Saturnina brought him to Tanawan. But without telling his father, he went to Santa Cruz to visit her mother in prison. He told her of his brilliant grades. After summer, he returned to Manila and awarded inside Intramuros at number 6 Magallanes Street, Doña Pepe, who had a widowed daughter and four sons, was his landlady. So let us proceed to the second year in Ateneo on 1873 to 1874. Rizal lost the class leadership, but he repented and even studied harder, once more became emperor. He received excellent grades in all subjects and a gold medal. The Prophecy of Mother's Release Doña Tudora told her son of her dream the previous night. Rizal, interpreting the dream, told her that she would be released from prison in three months' time, and it became true. Doña Tudora likened his son to the youthful Joseph in the Bible in his ability to interpret dreams. So let us proceed to the teenage interest in reading. The first favorite novel of Rizal was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Domas. His boyish imagination was stirred by the sufferings of Edmond Dantes or the hero in prison. His spectacular escape from the Dong Nguyen of Chatuo BF, his finding a buried treasure in the rocky island of Monte Cristo, and his dramatic revenge on his enemies who had wronged him. And also Rizal with nonfiction, he persuaded his father to buy a costly set of Cesar Cantus historical work in Tatar Universal History. He also read travels in the Philippines by Dr. Fyodor Jagor, a German scientist traveler who visited in Philippines in 1859 to 1860. And he also impressed by the Jagor's keen observations of the defects of Spanish colonization. And the second one is on his prophecy that someday Spain would lose the Philippines and that America would come to succeed her as colonizer. 
So, let us move on to the third year in Ateneo on 1875 to 1876. On June 16, 1875, he became an intern in Ateneo. Father Francisco de Paula Sanchez, one of his professors, inspired him to study harder and write poetry. Rizal best professor in Ateneo. Rizal described him as model of uprightness, earnestness, and love of the advancement of his pupils. He returned to Calamba with five medals and excellent things. In the last year in Ateneo in 1876 to 1877, Rizal the most brilliant Atenean of his time and was truly the pride of the Jesuits. So on the graduation with highest honors, on March 23 to 1877, Rizal is 16 years old, received from his alma mater, Ateneo Municipal, the degree of Bachelor's of Arts with highest honors. The night before graduation, he could not sleep. Early morning on the day of his graduation, he prayed to the Virgin to command his life and protect him as he stepped in the world, into the world rather. So let us move on to the extracurricular activities in Ateneo. Jose Rizal was an active member, later secretary of Marian Congregation, a religious society. He was accepted because of his academic brilliance and devotion to Our Lady of Immaculate Conception, the college patroness. He is also a member of the Academy of Spanish Literature and the Academy of Natural Sciences. Rizal studied painting under Agustin Sais, a famous painter and sculptor under Romualdo de Jesus. He also continued his physical training under his sports-minded Pio Manuel. So let us proceed to the sculptural works in Ateneo. He carved an image of the Virgin Mary and a piece of batikuling or Philippine hardwood with his pocket knife. The Jesuits' father were amazed. Father Leonard requested him to carve for him an image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. He intended to take the image with him in Spain but forgot to do so. So the Ateneo boarders placed it on the door of their dormitory. It plays a significant part in Rizal's last hours at Fort Santiago. So anecdotes on Rizal, the Atenean. Felix M. Rojas, he related an incident of Rizal's school days in the Ateneo which reveals the hero's resignation to pain and forgiveness. So Manuel Sarix Burgos, his anecdote on Rizal illustrates his predilection to help the helpless at the risk of his own life. So the next one is poems written by Rizal in Ateneo. Mi primera inspiración, or my first inspiration, is the first written poem of Rizal, which was dedicated to his mother on her birthday. He wrote it when he was 14 years old. So let us proceed to the Rizal's poem on education. So according to Rizal, through education our motherland receives light. Education plays in the progress and welfare of a nation. And of, and of course, the intimate alliance between religion and good education showed that education without God is not true education. So, Rizal's religious poem, Al Niño Jesus to the Jal Jesus, written when he was 14 years old, expressing his Catholic faith devotion. Second one is Alla Virgin Maria, or to the Virgin Mary. So, the next one is the dramatic work in Ateneo. Father Sanchez requested him to write a drama based on the prose story of Eustace the Martyr, he finished the request on June 2, 1876, entitled San Eustacio Martyr or Eustace the Martyr. So, the first romance of Rizal. He experienced his first romance with Segunda Katigbak, a pretty 14 years old Batangena from Lipa. One Sunday, Rizal visited his maternal grandmother in Trozo, Manila with his friend Mariano Katigbak one of whom was an attractive girl who mysteriously caused his heart to palpitate with a strange ecstasy was Segunda. His grandmother's guest urged him to draw Segunda portrait. From time to time, he reminisced. She looked at me and I blushed. Rizal came to know Segunda more intimately during weekly visits to La Concordia College, where his sister was boarding student. 
Olympia and Segunda was a close friend. There was indeed a love at first sight. But Segunda was already engaged to be married to Manuel Luz. So that will be all. Thank you for watching.